Welcome back to Security Onion Essentials. In our previous session, Installation Part 1, we downloaded and verified the Security Onion ISO, created a virtual machine that met the minimum hardware requirements for the platform, and ran the installer to put the basic Security Onion image on that VM. In this session, we're going to log back into that VM, run through the Security Onion setup, and then reboot and confirm that all of the services installed and are running correctly. Let's get started. Right now I'm at the console of the VM that we created in the last session, and I'm going to log in with the administrative username and password that we created during installation. Once I log in, the setup interface will automatically launch in the terminal window. Here you can see there's a link to our documentation page, as well as some information about the setup process. To navigate through this interface, it's easiest to use the arrow or tab keys to move around, and then the spacebar to make selections or confirm choices. Let's start by highlighting yes and tapping the spacebar to proceed to the next screen. Our first decision is whether to configure the entire security onion installation or just configure the network portion and then stop. This is useful in situations where you're pre-configuring a node that will be used remotely and want to make sure it's got the proper IP address set so that you can SSH in and complete configuration once it's on site. Since this is just a local installation on a VM, we can do the whole configuration now. Let's leave Install highlighted, hit Tab to move the cursor down, then Spacebar to select OK. Now we need to select what sort of node we are installing. An import node is a configuration designed to read in PCAP or EVTX files for analysis, rather than monitoring live traffic. An eval node, which is the one that we're going to be installing, is a simplified configuration designed to demonstrate the capabilities of the platform, but is not intended for day-to-day -day production use. A standalone is a production deployment for smaller environments, where all of the Security Onion components are installed and running on the same server. A distributed deployment is intended for enterprises where the different pieces of Security Onion are installed on separate, possibly geographically dispersed servers, in order to provide an efficient monitoring platform across a larger environment. Finally, the desktop option is for installing a custom Linux workstation joined to your Security Onion grid. For now, let's select Eval by arrowing down, and then we'll hit Tab and Spacebar to make our selection. Security Onion 2.4 and the Elastic components upon which it relies are distributed under version 2 of the Elastic license, which governs how the software can be used. If you'd like more information about this license, the URL on the screen provides its full text. To agree to the terms of the license and continue with the installation, Type Agree in the box, then Tab and Spacebar to continue. Security Onion is designed to be usable in isolated or high security environments without internet access. In this air gap configuration, the system can be updated via an ISO file or a USB stick rather than via internet downloads. This is just a standard VM installation, so we'll stick with standard and press OK to continue. Now we enter the host name of the eval node that we're configuring. Like the VM name, we're going to set the host name to SOEVAL and then tab and spacebar to continue. As you recall from the last video, we built this VM with two network interfaces. We need to select one of them as our management interface, that is, the interface that will be assigned an IP address and used to access the platform. We'll leave this set to the first one in the list and press OK to continue. If possible, we want to set a static IP address on this interface. The reason is that much of Security Onion is secured by internally generated certificates that are tied to specific IPs and host names. So changing those after the fact can have unexpected consequences, including communication failures between components. If you do select DHCP, make sure that you have an address reservation set up in your DHCP server so that this instance is not issued a different IP in the future. We're going to select Static and then OK. Now we need to assign an IPv4 address to that management interface. Enter the IP along with the site or subnet mask for the local network. Here, I'm going to use 192.168.64.10/24. Tab and spacebar to continue. Now, the gateway address that this node will use to access the internet and the rest of my network. 192.168.64.2. Tab and spacebar. The DNS servers, we can leave these as default. Although in a production environment, you'd want to set these to your internal DNS to enable things like reverse lookups. Tab spacebar. DNS search domain, again, we can leave this as the default, but in a production environment, you'd want to use your actual DNS search domain. 
Tab spacebar. Now we've completed the network interface setup portion. The rest of the questions are going to be about the Security Onion platform configuration itself. We're connecting directly to the internet from this node, not using a proxy, so we'll leave direct highlighted, tab and spacebar. The underlying architecture of Security Onion is based on Docker containers, which have their own small internal network to communicate with one another. We can leave the default here and press spacebar to continue. Now we need to add our monitoring interface. That is, the interface that will be watching and analyzing live traffic. Press spacebar to select the remaining interface, and then tab and spacebar to continue. Just a note, if you're installing on a VM or a physical piece of hardware with more than two network interfaces, you can certainly monitor traffic on multiple ports simultaneously. The underlying operating system will put them all together into a bond interface and treat it as one larger stream of traffic. And if you add more interfaces in the future, those can also be added to the bond interface. Check out our documentation for details. Now we need to set up the first account for the Security Onion console, or SOC, the web interface for the platform. The format of the username is username at domain, like an email address. This does not need to be a valid email address. It won't be used to send or receive anything from the platform. That's just the format of the account name. We're going to use analyst at acmeonions.com. Now we need to enter a password for that account. And again. This question is sometimes a little confusing for people. Security Onion needs to know what address format you intend to use to access the web console, so that when it is rewriting URLs as you move between components, it's able to do so securely and consistently. The simplest option is to access the interface directly by IP address. We're going to access the web console by its host name, which means we'll need a DNS record or some other method for resolving that host name to the appropriate IP on the network. The Security Onion web console is not accessible from outside unless you have explicitly added a client IP or network to the allow list. Let's select yes, and then we'll add our subnet for the NAT network in this VMware installation, 192.168.64.0/24. Tab and spacebar for OK. Finally, we're asked whether we want to opt in to SOC telemetry. What this feature does is send data about which SOC features are being used to Google Analytics and then to the development team in order to help us understand which features are the most popular and where we should dedicate development efforts. If you'd like more details about what telemetry is being collected and how long it's being retained, this is all documented at the URL here in the interface. For this demonstration instance, we're going to enable telemetry, so I'll hit spacebar to confirm. And that's all there is to set up. You see here, there's a summary of the configuration choices we've made. We'll take a look at those, and if everything looks correct, we select yes one last time and the setup process will begin. This is going to take a few minutes, so I'll pause the recording and come back once the setup is complete. We're back. As you can see, the setup is now complete, and we can access the web console using the host name and credentials that we entered during setup. We can just hit tab and spacebar on OK, and then open up a web browser and connect to the Security Onion console. This is the login screen for the Security Onion console. We just need to put in the username and password that we specified during the setup process, and you'll see it takes us to the main overview screen. All of the different components of Security Onion are accessible through these links on the left-hand side of the window, and we'll talk about many of them during the remaining videos in this collection. Right now, what we're interested in is the health of the node that we just deployed, so we're going to click on the grid link here. This is a summary screen that shows the status of the nodes in your Security Onion grid. As you can see, we've got a single node right now named SOEVAL, and the status balloon on the right-hand side of the screen shows that its current status is OK. If there were a problem, that balloon would be red and it would say Fault. If the node needed a reboot, there'd be a blue bubble that says Reboot. If we click on this caret to the left, you'll see some details about the node under Node Status. IP address, version of Security Onion installed, and so on. In the middle column is a list of the individual Security Onion containers and their current status. So if a particular service is broken or misconfigured, you could see that here. Scrolling down, it looks like everything is running. So this install and setup is complete. If you're following along and your installation has errors or does not look like this, please feel free to post on our community discussions forum for help. So to summarize, we took the installation from the last video and went through all of the steps to set up and configure our Security Onion node. 
Next session, we're going to replay some network traffic into this node and explore the analyst tools that are available in the Security Onion platform. See you there. Mm -hmm.